ABC Local Radio Queensland. The ABC in your community. And it's nine past two. Schizophrenia has been a long misunderstood condition which can have a debilitating effect on the person who has it and also on those who love them. Australian research into the causes of schizophrenia have revealed that the brains of people with this condition may be under attack by their immune system. Professor Cindy Shannon Weichardt from Neuroscience Research Australia, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Kelly. What do we now know about how the immune system may be attacking the brain? Well, our groundbreaking finding showing that in schizophrenia, the cortex is in crisis mode is critical in helping us understand that the brain of people with schizophrenia not only is on red alert, but may be attempting to repair the damage caused by the immune system activation. Mm. So th- this attack, well, can you describe it? Where, where is it happening and what is happening? It's in the frontal lobes of the brain, um, critical for concentration and thinking and language. Mm-hmm. And the, the immune system, what, what is going on then with the, the frontal lobes? Well, there's specialized immune cells within the brain called microglia. They have an increased density and they're sending out chemical messages that the cortex is in crisis. So the key question now is um, how do these signals get interpreted by the brain and the new cells that are attempting to repair the damage, why don't they work in doing um, the repair or rebuilding or healing the cortex? Mm. So with, with, with this immune system attack, is that causing inflammation or is it trying to fight the inflammation around the frontal cortex? Um, frontal lobes. We believe that it would be inducing um, signals that would be similar to what's found in inflammation, so induction of cytokines and sending out signals that could in some ways attempt to uh, repair the brain. However, they also may be inhibiting that repair or inhibiting the healing process. Mm. So this suggests two lines of new treatment um, that could be possibly effective in people with schizophrenia. One where we attempt to sort of put out the fire, if you will, of the cortex undergoing siege. Or the other one is to sort of add more construction workers to the repair process to get the brain to rebuild itself. Mm. So, Professor, is it a case then that the the inflammation or what is happening in that frontal lobe, is that causing the schizophrenia or has the schizophrenia, um, is that a result of something else and that's trying to repair it? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I know exactly what you mean. So um, one of the things that we know is there's not just one cause of schizophrenia, that there could be multiple causes, both genetic and environmental. Mm. And one of the lead genetic candidates actually is in Um, a region of the genome that harbors many immune-related genes and is important for normal immune function. So there's a genetic link. Mm. There's also an environmental link where viral exposure or early inflammation, be it in utero or in childhood, can increase the risk of schizophrenia. It's almost like the immune system could be primed. There's also other independent evidence that the brain could be making um, or the body could be making antibodies to brain proteins and then thus attacking the brain. And that suggests that immune-based therapies could be um, effective in dampening down that cortex that's in crisis. Mm. Do we know why, why that particular area of the brain as opposed to any other area? Well, we don't think that it's specific necessarily to that one area of the brain. That's where we've uh, focused our attention. But when we actually look in other areas of the brain, we also find evidence of um, abnormality. So, you know, when you actually are studying things at the cellular molecular level, you have to put a certain focus and drill down um, Mm -hmm. to be able to uh, compare Uh, regions across brains, but we don't think that it's necessarily specific to just one cortical area, but in fact may be widespread. Yeah. What made you and others working on schizophrenia and this type of research um, think in this manner or or go down this line of investigation? Well, 
I've been very interested in understanding schizophrenia from a neurodevelopmental perspective. You know, why does it have first onset in adolescence? And mm. what is it about the adolescent brain that may be vulnerable to um, developing schizophrenia? And what we've known or what we've been able to show through the research over the last decade is that um, the development of inhibitory interneurons or cortical interneurons actually is very protracted. So the cortex takes a long time to get built. And it takes um, a long time for these inhibitory interneurons to reach their final destination in the cortex. And so what we think actually is that these new neurons that are um, coming in to attempt to do the repair are these very same neurons that take a long time to develop. And that may be why one of the reasons why it um, overlaps in time with adolescence. But in terms of the clues, why would it be neuroinflammation yeah. was a discovery-driven approach. So we basically were looking through using new technology um, in, with collaborators in Queensland, actually, is new technology that's called next-generation sequencing that allowed us to look at all of the genes in the brain at once with greater sensitivity than ever has been applied before, hmm. and that's what led us down the path of identifying these immune modulators that are greatly upregulated in the brains of people with schizophrenia. So kind of a combination of approaches and thinking about what's happening in development and then a discovery-driven approach about, you know, what signals could be there that we maybe didn't have a hypothesis about before. Mm. Uh, with the research, you found that 40% of people with schizophrenia had this increased inflammation. Um, with with the other sixty percent, then do do we have any idea what is happening with them? Well, um, that's a good question, and uh, I believe that some people actually have a risk for schizophrenia because they don't respond normally to the adolescent increase in sex steroids. So mm -hmm. we've got a clinical trial running now that actually stimulates the sex steroid receptor. And we're seeing if that is effective for people with schizophrenia. It's interesting, isn't it? And, and what about then genetic predisposition? If we know this, down the track, would we be able to maybe um, keep an eye on adolescents who have a history of schizophrenia in their family and to be able to see where their levels were at and you know, give them a hand in, in years to come, to, you know, to be able to help them uh, bump up their levels or whatever needs to be done? You're very perceptive, Kelly. That's absolutely the direction that we would want to head. And what I would hope is that we could come up with biomarkers that would mm -hmm. distinguish people with schizophrenia that have the disease for different reasons. So, that you know, you can think about yeah. it as there's not going to be one cure to schizophrenia. There's going to be several cures to schizophrenia. We need to identify which person is going to respond best to which novel therapy. So we'll have multiple biological root causes and multiple different approaches to treat those root causes, but we'll need to have biomarkers to tell us, and those could be genetic or they could be things in the serum, they could be immune factors even, but to tell us who's most likely to respond to what therapy. All right. Well, as I say, it's fascinating research and uh, anything that uh, helps people with schizophrenia, such a debilitating condition, um, it can only be a good thing. Thank you so much. Well, thanks for your interest and have a nice day. Professor Cindy Shannon Weikart, who is from Neuroscience Research Australia, and they've been looking into the causes of schizophrenia and have found that uh, f the brains of people with this disease, for 40% of those uh, that they looked at, there was increased inflammation in, uh, in part of the brain. So uh, let's hope that that helps find uh, ways of either dealing with that condition or stopping it in its tracks when uh, our children get into their adolescence.